3,420 pounds tandem axle Kodiak ultralight hybrid camper coming in on trade here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna call it. I'm just throwing in the flag. We're gonna call this one a handyman special. Handyman special. Now we're gonna do this one just kind of Resident Evil style. I'm just using the flashlight on my phone real quick to give us a little extra light. And let's get the scary out of the way, shall we? The floor, well, it's had water on it. Um, when the previous owners, who were not the original owners, but when they bought it, they discovered it had not been winterized properly um, and it had a sink leak. And as a result, there is a spot here in front of the sink that is very, very soft. Now I have walked across it. I didn't like it. I didn't feel like I was going to fall through the floor but it's not right by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, I'd rather just kind of get it out of the way, you know what I mean? Um, the uh, soft spot kind of continues up about halfway across the sofa, but as you can see, about an 18 inch strip, uh, or 18 inch wide strip of OSB across there, and I could walk around it just fine. Case in point, I'm gonna take my, you know, ugly, boring brown shoes and trek right across this thing. Now I can still feel the floor move below my feet a little bit, but obviously, you know, 200 pounds a guy can walk all over this thing. I'm not saying you should do a jump up and down barn dance hoot nanny on her, but it's fine. Not ideal. But guys, we're calling it a handyman special. We're getting it out of the way. We are not asking top dollar for this. Now, if what you're looking for is a problem-free philosophy, Hakuna Matata, then this is probably not the RV for you. Appreciate the fact, please, that we went out of our way to get this done. Talk about this part first. We got the scary out of the way. We talk about elephants in the room at Halo RV. So if you're still with us, you're saying, okay, what else you got? Because for the right money, potentially I could still be interested. And I think that there is some potential here. Normally I wouldn't say anything with issues like that would be really ideal for first timers. But considering that, if you've never camped before in an RV, I don't know that this is like the best way to get started, but it is a very low dollar way to get started. Or if you're like a fix it and flip it kind of person, perhaps there's something here for you. We do like to have a little bit of everything for every budget. We've been blessed with some very, very nice trades recently here. This one just a little bit rougher around the edges than we would prefer. I, I wish, I wish that that wasn't the case. I wish that it was in flawless condition. It would look better. You'd probably be happier with it, but it would also run more money. 60 by 80 queen beds, front and rear, by the way. Flipping around the other direction, we have a pair of big breeze windows, which is fantastic. And both the sofa and dinette uh, can fold down into extra sleepers. And you see how there is storage below here. Um, also storage below the sofa. Well, part of the sofa, like the water heater is down there and it's winterized currently. Now, below the refrigerator, and then this huge chunk of cabinet space. This thing has some really impressive storage for a hybrid camper. And this big triple door monstrosity right there, that's the depth of a refrigerator, by the way. Um, is all hanging space. So, uh, you know, this has an unusual amount of close hanging storage that hybrid campers are not really well known for having. Um, the uh, couple things in the cabinetry here, I think there used to be like a little decorative screen up there that is just not here anymore. The original microwave appears to have given up the ghost, and I see an aftermarket replacement microwave just kind of set up there. I would recommend pulling that down for transit, although it apparently it did travel here free-floating like that. Um, the uh, rest of the kitchen stuff seems all right, and I mentioned when the folks uh, bought this, there was a link, uh, uh, pardon me, a leak uh, under the sink of which they were not made aware from whoever sold it to them. Um, they uh, say that they've gone through and they have fixed that. But understand, on a, you know, handyman special, like, low dollar budget purchase like this, it is not the kind of camper for which uh, I will make a lot of promises, nor will I, uh, are we, like, you know, sinking a ton of money into it. It's as is, where it is, how it is. If you don't mind fixing a couple things or just kind of using it as it is, Give us a call, let's put something together, let's get you camping. But at least you know that we're gonna shoot you straight and do it right. Now just because of our proximity to everything here, I'm actually gonna work around this trailer in my opposite from normal arrangement. We're gonna end our way up on the roof. The bed end material looks about like the rest of the RV where it's seen some better days, but it's not dead yet. It's kind of like the old Monty Python bit where he's like, I'm not dead yet, I feel fine. Um, manual awning, 
The material for which actually looks pretty decent. Now the skin and the decals overall look pretty good. Like there's a very, very minor amount of weather checking here. It just unfortunately looks like it was, it really the RV didn't fail. It was the previous ownership like two owners ago who kind of failed to take care of this thing. Now below that uh, uh, bench, dinette bench, part of the sofa and under a portion of that front bed, you see you do have a good pass-through storage, which is great. A little gas grill with a hookup right here. I haven't looked at the age code on the tires. They're probably aged out, I'm gonna guess, but overall they look okay. I got a feeling this RV was actually stored away from the worst of the weather, because like, if you look here at the old Kodiak bear screaming its head off at us, Generally speaking, it looks okay. What I mean by a minor amount of weathering, if I get really close, we can see that little crack in the D decal right there. But otherwise, she looks all right. Maybe the little bear is trying to scratch his way out. I don't know. I'm not a Steve Irwin zookeeper, zoologist kind of guy. I'm just an RV nerd, man. I'm also trying to stall a little bit as I back up so that I don't trip and fall over something. Although that would make for some pretty entertaining footage now, wouldn't it? Um, previous owners also put a little two inch receiver hitch on the rear bumper back here. Uh, you know, in case you want to add like a little bike rack or something like that. And that spare tire actually looks pretty darn new. You may have noticed a funny black arm shaped object sticking off of that um, uh, spare tire mount. That is a rear view camera. But our understanding is from speaking to the previous owners, it was on there when they got it and it quote, never ever worked. So eh, there you have it. Um, Again, tires looking all right. The skirting on those fender wells looks pretty good. I don't really see like stress marks in the body under these lights. If you get right up alongside the trailer and you kind of follow the light line of it, you could see where there's been like bends or stress marks. I'm not seeing any of that. Like I said, the RV, generally speaking, looks to have done its job well. Unfortunately, it was either owner number one or two, not the most recent owner that just didn't, didn't do their part. Um, now up top you can see a max air vent cover, but let's actually climb right up there and give ourselves a better look at that, shall we? And we figured as long as it's in here, we go ahead and grab a ladder since it was two feet away, take a peek at the roof. Roof is fine. It needs clean something fierce, but I don't see any problems with it. Um, I noticed like there's a little patch here. Somebody probably caught like a tree branch or something, but it was patched. It was done. I don't really see where it's affected anything significantly as a result. Um, there's a couple little areas like along the front termination strip here. Um, and I don't want to wiggle around too much on this ladder, but uh, long story short, it looks like they were just kind of putting sealant over sealant, which isn't necessarily the ideal correct way to do it, but it can still work and apparently it did. So there you go. Kind of eliminate the mystery of this one right here. So give us a call here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, where even if it's on a ladder, we are on top of things. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. You like that, Joe?